Hi everyone, I'm Susie Castillo and I wanted to take a moment to um, talk to you all and, and share with you um, the unfortunate experience that I had with the TSA at Dallas-Fort Worth Airport on April 21st. Um, I was in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, where I was traveling. I was hosting um, hosting a show. I'm actually a host and an actress. Uh, I'm an author and I, I do motivational speaking, so I unfortunately have to travel um, you know, by airplane for my job. If I want to pay my bills, I have to travel by airplane. And um, that's actually what I was doing on April 21st. I was hosting a show in Rio de Janeiro. Um, and on my way back into the country, I had to go through customs. And when I went through the airport security checkpoint, um, I noticed right away that there were two lines. There was one line where everybody was being ushered through the full body scanner machine and the other line people were just going through the regular metal detector. And that line was actually quite longer than the other one so I just thought, you know, I had enough time, I'm going to wait in this longer line so that I don't have to opt out of the scanner and get a, a, get a pat down. Um, I waited in the long line and, and as I approached the front of that line, about to go through the metal detector, I had a male TSA agent who stopped me and said, you know, excuse me, ma'am, you're going to have to get into this line. And he pointed to the uh, full body scanner line. And I said, sir, you know, I'm actually standing in this other line. I've been waiting here longer um, because I don't want to go through that machine. And he said, well, that's fine, but you, you know, you're going to opt out. You're just going to have to get a pat down now. And, you know, I actually had gotten a pat down on my way to Rio de Janeiro when I started my trip in Los Angeles. And that pat down was actually okay. It, was, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't invasive. Um, it was done pretty quickly and efficiently, and I was sent on my way. However, the pat down that I received uh, in Dallas that day was completely different. It was totally invasive. I mean, my every one of my private areas was touched several times. I, I was left in tears after that experience because I felt so helpless and so degraded. Never in my life have I been more degraded than I, than I had been that day at Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. And um, as I walked to the airport um, hallway right after security to meet my husband who was standing there waiting for me, um, I just burst into tears. I started crying. I, I was so emotional because, you know, as an innocent person, I was being treated as if I was guilty of some crime. You know, we live in a country where we're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty, yet somehow when we step into the TSA's domain, it's the other way around. We're guilty until we're proven innocent. And, you know, that fact just left me infuriated on top of that, I was vi I was physically violated, and and again, I'm an innocent human being, you know. And and I hear people say all the time, well, if you don't want to get the invasive pat down, you should go through the body scanner then. Well, I'm an extremely healthy person. I I have a blog. Actually, the the video that I made about my experience um, in Dallas, which a couple days later went viral um, throughout the world. Um, I made that video because it was related to my blog. My blog, I write mostly about health and nutrition and I share healthy recipes and things like that. And, you know, my reasons for not going through the full body scanner at airports um, are completely health related. You know, I don't want to expose myself to more radiation than I already get on a daily basis by, you know, background, through background radiation. So I want to read this to you guys because I found a very interesting letter from four professors from the University of California in San Francisco. And they actually wrote a letter to Dr. John Holdren, who is the assistant to the president for science and technology. And this letter they wrote actually um, on April 6th of 2010, which was before these um, backscatter machines were deployed to airports. And you know, the, the scientists, uh, they bring up some really interesting points that were really eye-opening to me, so I wanted to share some of them with you. Um, they say, we wanted to call your attention to our concerns about the potential serious health risks of the recently adopted whole-body backscatter X-ray airport security scanners. This is an urgent situation, as these X-ray scanners are rapidly being implemented as a primary screening step for all air travel passengers. Now, I want to point out that these scientists are professors in biochemistry and biophysics at the University of California in San Francisco. They are experts in imaging. They are internationally well-known and respected cancer experts. Um, they are x-ray crystallographers and they're also members of the NAS, 
which is the National Academy of Sciences. Um, they bring up many interesting points, um, and one of the things that they say is um, the X-ray dose from these devices has often been compared in the media to the cosmic ray exposure inherent to airplane travel or that of a chest X-ray. However, this comparison is very misleading. Both the air travel cosmic ray exposure and X-rays um, and chest X-rays have much higher X-ray energies and the health consequences are appropriately understood in terms of the whole body volume dose. In contrast, these new airport scanners are largely depositing their energy into the skin and the immediately adjacent tissue. And since this is such a small fraction of body weight or volume, the real dose to the skin is now extremely high. Now that, that's a really interesting point because people need to understand the difference in radiation. When you're on an airplane, that radiation is affecting our body as a whole, in its entirety, like it's in, in its entire volume. When you're going through the backscatter machine at airports, basically the radiation is zapping your skin. So, I mean, it's zapping your, your cornea, your eyeballs, your, I mean, your entire skin as, as one organ. And so it's, it's much different than, than if the, the radiation was dispersed throughout your body uh, as a whole. Um, so it's a really, um, it, that's, that's an interesting distinction that, that everybody has to make. Um, you know, they go on to say, you know, we would like to put our concerns, our current concerns into perspective. As long-standing scientists and physicians, we have witnessed critical errors and decisions that have seriously affected the health of thousands of people in the United States. These unfortunate errors were made because of the failure to recognize potential adverse outcomes of decisions made at the federal level. Crises create a sense of urgency that frequently leads to hasty decisions where unintended consequences are not recognized. There has not been sufficient review of the intermediate and long-term effects of radiation exposure associated with airport scanners. There is good reason to believe that these scanners will increase the risk of cancer to children and other vulnerable populations. We are unanimous in believing that the potential health consequences need to be rigorously studied before these scanners are adopted. We urge you to empower an impartial panel of experts to reevaluate the potential health issues we have raised before there are irrevocable long-term consequences to the health of our country. These negative effects may on balance far outweigh the potential benefits of increased detection of terrorists. They go on to raise, to talk about some red flags and talk about how, um, you know, the radiation can um, mutate your genes, can mutate, alter your cells and thus causing cancer later on in life. They don't know what the risks are to, um, to the fetus of a pregnant woman going through the machine. Um, you know, these studies just have not been done. And so how can they tell us that these machines are safe if the studies are not there? You know, there are no clinical studies. Um, so it's, it's really unfortunate. I think it's important that we all be educated on this matter so that we can make educated decisions in our lives. Um, and if you want to read the, in, this letter in its entirety, I, I urge you to because I, I only took certain pieces of it to share with you today. Um, but I did post this entire letter on my website on suzycastillo.net. Um, I wrote a blog called Why Everyone Should Opt Out of the Airport Body Scanner. Um, so I, I urge you all to read that and share it with your loved ones, share it with your friends so that everyone's informed. And while you're there on my website, please sign my petition that's on my homepage. Um, you know, this is an opportunity for your voices to be heard and I, and I want to hear your stories. Please share with me your stories of, of you know, violation, have, if you've been violated by the TSA or, uh, you know, a friend's story, whatever the story is, I urge you to share it with me on my petition. Um, you know, and it's just unfair. It's completely unfair what the TSA is doing. They're, they've become an agency that is violating our, our human rights on a daily basis. And we shouldn't just sit back and allow this to happen. I'm not going to, and I thank you all for your support and, and for speaking out on this matter. Um, you know, I, I will say this, I'm not an expert on security, but I am an expert in knowing when I've been violated. and. A violation has happened with me, it's happening with many people across the country, and we can't allow it to continue to happen. So thank you so much for your support, um, God bless you all, and keep up the good work.